So there's, there was a question about um, the way I sort of split the Helmholtz um, potential into a uh, part which I identified as being the strain energy density and another part which I just called the thermal part. Um, and the, the, essentially the question was uh, relates to uh, whether we are allowed to do the split, what it means and how we can then get the second piola kirchhoff also as a derivative of the Helmholtz potential with respect to the strain. So let me try to address those questions. Um, here, here's how it works. So if we write out the Helmholtz potential, And now I'm going to write it out in a form that also includes the mass density per unit reference volume so that what we have here, what I've just written, is a Helmholtz potential per unit reference volume. Now, uh, it, it, is, it, it, it has the dimensions of an energy. It has the physical dimensions of an energy, okay? Now, this I said is equal to some part that I'm identifying as being the strain energy density plus a thermal part. Now, uh, okay, so this part is the strain energy density, and there's a thermal part which uh, I might as well ascribe a symbol to, and I'm trying to recall, trying to think of what we have not yet used. Um, let me see. Um, let me let me do this. Let me call this thermal part. Um, well, I can't use U. We've used U for the stretch tensor. Um, let me say I use. Um, okay. Let me use a. Um, let me use chi. Sorry, not chi. Xi. Okay. We haven't used C before. All right, so the thermal part is C. Now, uh, since everything I've written here is an energy or an energy density, it follows that when I say that the Helmholtz potential is equal to the sum of, uh, or, or, or is equal to two quantities, uh, or is, is equal to the combination in some way of two other quantities, it has to be additive. Okay, it can't be multiplicative or anything else. Okay, so so that that's the explanation for the additive split. Now. Uh, for the purposes of argument, let us suppose that the only part on the right-hand side that depends upon the strain is this, right? The strain energy density. That the thermal part does not depend upon the, upon the strain energy, okay? Just, just for the purposes of argument. Now, the strain energy density may have a further dependence upon the strain, upon, upon the temperature. That's okay, okay? But just for the purposes of argument, let's suppose it's, it's this, this is how we have it, okay? So, this is all right. So now it follows that when we take derivatives, okay, we must have this identification, right? All right, this is what allows us to write it. It is, it is basically the idea that we have, we must have an additive split of the Helmholtz potential into a strain energy density and a thermal part. That is key. Now, of course, you may want to relax the requirement that um, one can write it out in this fashion where the thermal part depends only upon theta. That's okay. If we include it on, in, in C, a dependence upon E, it would just mean that we are not able to split the purely strain-dependent part and the purely temperature-dependent part in any way. But still, the, the identification of this derivative with the stress would remain. It would simply mean that in our development up to now when we considered continuum mechanics only without thermal quantities, we were perhaps looking at things with, uh, with, with chi bar at a fixed value of the temperature, okay? So that, that, that's really all it means. The, the key is this additive split. This additive split is, crit is critical. 
and it follows just by observing that everything we are dealing with here is indeed an energy. So it must admit an additive split. Okay? All right. So, so that, that, that's the explanation for why we can go ahead and do this.